We all live in a world of numbers, but just like how there are a lot of types of animals in our world, there are a lot of types of numbers out there as well. So to learn all these, let's travel all the way back to the Egyptians and the Babylonians when they first came up with what we call natural numbers. These are numbers that we use every day, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And these are also known as counting numbers, because we can literally use them to count things. Like I have one head, you have two eyeballs, and I have ten fingers. Even Google is based on a counting number. The name Google comes from one at Google, and that is one with a hundred zeros behind it. So natural numbers are pretty useful, but the story doesn't end here. A few hundred years after that, a mathematician in India named Brahmagupta pondered this. How do I count nothing? For example, if this basket has three apples and this basket has one apple, how do we represent a basket with no apples? Plus, zero was born and our world of numbers expanded with a new layer called whole numbers. And now whole numbers are basically the same as natural numbers, but now we include a zero. So as time went on, mathematicians all over the world were just happy chipping away at their math problems when all of a sudden, a few of them, first in China and then in Greece and then in India, started getting answers that were below zero. You and I know that these are just negative numbers, but back then it was a strange concept to think about. So to solve this problem, mathematicians put their foot down and said, you know what, we're going to create a whole new subset of numbers and call it negative numbers. The invention of negative numbers now added on a new layer to our world called integers. And this includes all the whole numbers and all the natural numbers from earlier, but now includes their negative counterparts. Then in 6th century BC, good old Pythagoras came along and said, what happens if we take one integer and then create a ratio over another? Another integer. And thus, he discovered rational numbers. Notice how the word rational has the word ratio inside of it. These are numbers like 1 half, negative 5 over 9, 0.7, and 0.3 repeating. A rational number is basically any number in the world that you can write as a fraction. So even though 0.7 is a decimal, you can still write that as a fraction 7 over 10. And even though 0.3 repeating is a repeating decimal, you can write it as a fraction 1 over 3. But then, are there any numbers in the world that can't be written as a fraction? Yes, there are. And these are called irrational numbers, but they can't sit with the rest of the crew. Now, irrational numbers are just numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. You probably know the number pi, that's pretty famous, and that is 3.14159 and so on. That's irrational. Or how about the golden ratio? And actually, a lot of square roots are irrational numbers, like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. Let's go back for a second to our good friend Pythagoras. Now, Pythagoras, since he invented rational numbers, he hated the idea of irrational numbers. And legend has it that one day, one of his followers came up to him and said, hey, the square root of 2 doesn't have a fraction, it's irrational. Pythagoras was so angry that he ordered one of his men to literally drown the guy. He didn't want anyone else in the world to know the truth about the square root of 2. Finally, let's complete our entire world of numbers by calling these real numbers. Real numbers include everything inside the circle, from natural numbers, to whole numbers, to integers, to rational numbers, and even irrational numbers. Now these are the numbers you will encounter every day. And if you're thinking, well, if our world is a world of real numbers, is there a world of fake numbers? And actually, yes, there is. But we don't call them fake numbers, we call them imaginary numbers, which sounds similar enough. Now, imaginary numbers include things like the square root of negative numbers, and this world will blow your mind. But to get there, we need to first conquer our world of real numbers, so let's get to it and start mastering real numbers.